The new Ferrari SF24 completed a filming day in Fiorano last week, as technical director Enrico Cardile confirms that the configuration used was exactly the same as what will feature in Bahrain testing. In the meantime, a new updated aerial look is already in the tunnel, different to the specification to debut at the Sakir circuit. Most likely, this new part could be introduced when the European races begin. With several variables to consider, initial comparison work between different engine covers is not surprising. The unchanged technical regulations allow us to carry out comparisons with a certain solidity, and there was immediately something interesting to notice when thinking about the old car. The second hood specification, however, should not be the priority solution during the season. Instead, the specification with the cut fin, as seen on the SF23, will be the preferable version. The SF23 had largely inherited the wing specifications introduced by the F175. These specs debuted at Fiorano and Bahrain with the same medium load wing used on the long straights in Canada and Silverstone. This was quite perplexing since Bahrain is a track that requires substantial load levels. It was concluded very quickly after testing that the car did not have enough basic options to increase the load of the platform in a balanced way. Ferrari's SF23 was a car born with a significant aerodynamic imbalance because it could not afford to add downforce to the rear without generating massive understeer. The debut of the SF24 showed a completely new rear wing assembly, which in itself is never a given given the attempted crossover in times of budget cap. In the case of Ferrari, it was simply necessary, and it is not a negligible fact. Part of the development of this car was also to completely renovate the rear wing. The 2024 car already has a new rear wing with more downforce, and Ferrari are renewing practically the entire range they have accordingly. The old SF23 was the best without DRS but too poor in terms of load. The concept is also directly responsible for the effectiveness of the DRS. Marinello's engineers now understand why Red Bull enjoyed such an advantage in this area last year. The visual result lies in the total design change of the rear axle. It is clear how much the designers decided to focus on very smooth surfaces, albeit with a less extreme design. Ferrari's medium load main plane is now less curved and more extended. Meanwhile, the double beam wing is totally reprofiled with a much larger surface and the other flat. In essence, this aspect suggests that the front end will also finally offer more load. Perhaps, as Charles Leclerc says, the car will not lose straight line speed to find a new compromise. However, it is absolutely vital that the DRS guarantees the required efficiency since it is possible that the SF24 could have a slightly greater basic drag than the 23 due to bulkier wings. The filming of the car at Fiorano was consistent in terms of checking and scanning the new parts and heights. At the shakedown, the engineers always run a program that has nothing to do with performance. They put the drivers in a bit of a crisis with aggressive setup choices to understand the response together. The lap times are insignificant, rather it's necessary first make sure that no macro errors emerge from the project. When they are not there, then you can move forward with development. From this point of view, the car reacted positively. A first fixed point is positive. The SF24 will be able to mount grades of specifications more suited to tracks that require a medium-high load such as in Bahrain. It is reasonable to expect a car that controls wear much better, and is much more neutral to broaden the driver's settings. We will know soon enough whether it will also be fast enough, as T's are already gearing up for the winter preseason testing session, which is set to take place this week at the Sakir circuit in Bahrain, giving us a first insight into the potential of each car for the 2024 Formula One Championship.